Welcome to Pat's Cast, the unofficial Regina Pat's podcast. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And this is our episode for December 20th, 2021, and our mid-season rundown. Matejchuk at center. He's over the Regina line, drops it to the right circle. Ferkus, Matejchuk! Oh, massive save! Matthew Keeper! You've got to be kidding me! Face off in the O-zone, and they win it. Left side, Dubinsky. In front, How shoots, he scores! And here Okay, Chris, so the Pats have played 28 games thus far. We have 12 wins, 16 losses, currently sitting at 11th in the Eastern Conference. Good for second to last place. Uh, is this kind of where where you're thinking we would be? Uh, I thought maybe it would be a little better than that, above yeah. 500. I think I, I agree. I think I agree. It's uh, the, the Pats... I mean, if you want to summarize this first half of the season, uh, what would it be? Streaky? Inconsistent? Yeah, yeah, inconsistent was my word. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. We've had, what, some three, four-game win streaks, and then five, six. How long have our losing streaks (laughs) been? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, just can't string along a bigger win streak, but, I mean, that comes with the territory. They're not... You know, they're not the best team, and it's going to be tough, right? Those middling teams kind of just got to just kind of plug away, and you got to get those wins where you can. And, yeah. And, uh, and you know, it yeah. felt like these last two games against Moose Jaw were just like a good kind of... Microcosm. Microcosm of what the season's been like. It was uh, a really hot part, you know, with that, that Moose Jaw game at home. They're up four goals to none, and then... Penalty troubles, undisciplined hockey, um, maybe not the best fundamentals started to kind of creep in, and then we saw letting teams back in, uh, missing opportunities, letting them take advantage of opportunities. Um, just about lost it. Tried their best to lose it, where they snatch victory from the jaws of defeat or whatever it was. But uh, yeah, like they they tried to lose that game pretty hard. <laughs> Uh, and then into Moose Jaw, you know, another kind of representation of the season, a slow, slow start, uh, just weren't really in the game and couldn't, couldn't dig out of the hole that, that they found themselves in. Um, yeah, like similar to the week before, like we didn't, we didn't get on last week, but, uh, you know, you have a good game against Medicine Hat, a team that you should beat. Yeah. And then. Same thing, a bad start in Brandon, and they tried to come back, and it just was too much to overcome. And yeah, yeah, just just like you said, up and down, up and down. And I kind of feel like that hole might be what this season ends up being. Like we're down eleventh place, twenty four points, uh, out of a playoff spot right now. We're in a bit of a hole. Is it something this team can dig out of? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like. Grant, you know, there's been some injuries. Um, just haven't seemed to really have a lot of consistency necessarily with some of the lineup. I think we've just maybe found a line for Bedard that seems to be clicking. Um, but yeah, you get a few injuries, some suspensions in there. <laughs> you know, uh, just yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be an uphill battle, I think, for this team for the rest of the season. Yeah, definitely. And then yeah, you get. Bedard click in with Hal and uh, Vallis, and then he's off to World Juniors, right? <laughs> and then he makes that team. Yeah, maybe maybe a little surprise to some people, um, but uh, it looks like he deserved it. So, so I was surprised uh, if I didn't know how he played in camp and the games that that they have those mini games or exhibition games. Um, I would be surprised, like if they didn't have those. Uh, I don't know if he necessarily would have made the team. But he certainly played his way onto that team, I think. Yeah, and I watched all of one period out of those two games against the U Sports players. Yeah. And he he and he had six points in two games and nobody else had more than two. I right. mean, some players only played one game, but I mean still he put up six points. He had a goal on his first shift. So yeah. like if that isn't, hey, look at me, look what I'm doing, what is, right? Like and they obviously they know his 
his skill level and the talent he has. But I mean, a guy like Shane Wright, he didn't make it last year. Um, but yeah. it looked like Bedard was really ramping it up those last couple games before the camp. You could see he was he was a little better, right? I mean, not that he was bad before. Maybe he was just getting in the doldrums of you know the this up and down team, inconsistent. Maybe yeah. you know maybe he's not. I don't want to say he's not giving full effort, but you can't give your full no. effort every single game. It's it's yeah. going to wear you out. But I know I maybe. I totally get what you're saying. Like we weren't seeing those. Him taking over the game, yeah, and and in the last couple of weeks leading up to to him leaving, it felt like he was taking more of that role and really letting his skill uh, come out. And I don't know, you know, in the middle of the season or the middle of the start of the season, I guess, like you know, the first couple of games, first few weeks, uh, yeah, things just weren't quite clicking for whatever reason. Um, so whatever he did, uh, maybe it was the motivation of making that team. That that was the difference in the last little while. I don't know, but I agree. It uh, something changed over the last little bit, and uh, it's been a lot more fun to watch him play. Um, yeah, yeah, because it kind of reminded me me more of his time in the hub, right? Where every yeah, shift yeah. you're like, okay, here comes some, something. something can happen. Whereas we were kind of starting to feel not that he was he was a good player, but he wasn't an impact player uh, for a little stretch there. But, uh, yeah, it changed a little bit. He obviously made that impact uh, during those U Sports games and earned his way onto that team. And hopefully it's exciting when he comes back, too. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons is Tanner Howe. Like, uh, he's got, he's scored 15, he's got points in 15 straight games, right? Which like, is... that's that's unreal. And he's, he's the youngest guy on the team, right? Yeah. So. He you know, he had one 16. point in his first 10 games, and now he's just gone off, like, yeah. 15 straight. So, I mean, that's one guy that's really surprised. And talking with Logan Nyhoff after last week's game, I can't remember which one it was, um, but he said the guy was a steal in the fourth round, but when he came into the hub, we knew right away that he was he could play. Right away, they they knew it was he was going to be good. Yeah, maybe not this good, and I mean, nobody could have predicted that. But um, no, like, and then John Paddock talks about that. We'll throw in throw in an interview with him and get his thoughts on how and some of these young guys. Absolutely, let's let's throw to that interview with John Paddock. I I like how he he summarizes a lot of the uh, kind of the feelings that we've been feeling uh, over the last little while, and it fits really well into our our mid season review here with, with the, where the team is at and, and some of these young guys. Uh, so we'll do that now. Here is John, the coach of the Pats. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's encouraging because we go back to, you know, uh, always first goal, the play that Ballas made, you know, taking the puck to the net off the side there, like uh, it's sort of funny. I had a meeting with Boria a couple three days ago and we, could see right away that he had the skill but it was the, the skating and the, the work and just knowing what it takes to play at this level I mean it's a, he's he's playing in a hugely different level uh, of hockey compared to the midget team he was on in Denver the midget team on, on Denver is not the Pat C's he's not taking a step from the Pat C's level to the, the Pat's level he's taking a bigger step than that and it's a bit of a progression and stuff but that, that play taking the puck net like that's a big time play like I don't know what NHL scouts are here who you close to Christmas, but that's a play that they are going to come back and see that guy again. Uh, that's just one game, and you're not always going to get six, but, uh, you know, the development, the progression of Howe and Ballas and Whitehead specifically, but all of them, you know, the younger guys have gotten better, uh, you know, is what it's sort of what it's about and what we need and so forth, and they're the next wave of the hockey team along with Connor and some guys. So, um, I mean, Howie's been an unbelievable player for us. You know, for a, somebody who just turned 16 about 10 days ago, he's really impressive. I don't know. Though, you know, when Howie came last year in the hub, like he just stepped in right away like he was 17 then and stuff. So, but to be scoring the amount of points he's scoring, I mean, that's, that's really impressive. So, I'm not sure how to answer that, you know. 
and Valley, like we, I said, we saw he had the talent. Uh, it was to get it out of him, get him used to this pace and this level. And you know, I think the good part about it is, for the most for the most part, Dave used to say, my, "Well, he said my first year," and he's right. Like when you when those guys, those younger players, the seventeen year olds, mostly not quite the sixteen year olds, but when they come back at Christmas time, they take even another step and. If those two and Braxton can take another step, then they're really starting to gain ground. And the other guys, Zane and Matt, they'll take a step too. If we had known he was going to be like this, we'd have taken him sooner. And uh, all the other teams could say that. I think the big thing was, I mean, there's still an element of size needed in the game. There's more small players playing or smaller players. They, they're good players. So, I mean, I, I've looked at the reports enough since the time just thinking how fortunate we are to have him but you know he was playing the point in the, or playing the sidewall in the power play quarterback in the power play for bantam team uh and in uh in the sask first in uh in february that year when i saw him play uh he was a really good offensive player but always at the end of the report like well you know he needs to grow some or is he going to grow or is he going to be big enough and uh when we saw him dale and mullen and i talked to his parents and him a week before he came into the hub probably and he signed a couple of days later we saw him in the park car of the business office walked across Dale didn't recognize him and in a total of about 11 months he'd gained like 35 pounds 40 pounds and growing like 3 or 4 inches that was the only thing he was missing if, you know if he'd have been that size then uh, at the draft time he'd have went in the second round you still you have to balance all the things that you look at in, forming a player so we knew right then that he was going to be good good this early like this no that's you can't I mean he's playing like a so we were talking about Tanner Howe there. quite a bit but uh, he referenced uh, some of the other guys so uh, Vallis of course has uh, really come into the scene here lately um, kind of an unsung hero I think would be Whitehead too uh, a guy that when you watch the games if you watch the game it stands out he doesn't necessarily get the the stats to back it up, but I've been I've been pleasantly surprised with his growth as well. Um, and you know, even our goalkeeper uh, Matthew Keeper, he's had a f- maybe some tough outings here in the last little while, um, getting pulled in a couple. But you know, we talked about the possibility of this uh, a young a young goaltender moving up from how many games did he play uh, last year and in his well, not very many, yeah up to uh, really carrying the brunt of the load for the Pats. We were a little bit worried. Uh, maybe he'd just get a little tired or run out of gas here. Um, and we might be seeing a little bit of that. Um, so this break hopefully recharges him a little bit and comes back because he was really, he was the difference in some of the games earlier on this season. Yeah, and like say that Brandon where he got pulled uh, just last week, um, I mean, two of the three goals that, that he let in weren't weren't his fault. One was off a skate. One was a backdoor guy was wide open, stuff like that. And then they pulled him pretty quick. He had three goals on four shots, but that's that's not really not on him there. So maybe just give him a break and get Sim in some more some more action. Yeah, and uh, further the speaking with John, uh, it was a really good interview that you were able to get with him. He he did speak to more generalities which is kind of the theme of this episode too isn't so much of specifics to last week but just kind of the general feel of the the year thus far um so he references some and speaks to kind of where the team is at and and uh what they can do and where they're going from here uh so he's got some good comments in here so we'll play play a bit of a clip here it's a bit of an insider more than us just talking about the team uh, a bit of an insider view of the state of affairs at this point. So we'll we'll throw it to John Paddock here and, and listen in to him. Well, I think we, we remained in the mix. I think every team's had a lot of injuries and stuff. I know Brandon was hit real hard. Every team has them. Um, I'm looking forward to we get all our players back. Um, and the, the young guys have dealt, and they got to stay in the lineup, and they got to stay playing. They got to stay in key roles. But when you look at having Connor out, you look at having uh, String out. Um, Zach Smith had a slow smart start, excuse me, slow start, and then was just 
his best game was when he got hurt. You're talking about three forwards that can play probably in just about anybody's top couple of lines except Edmonton and Winnipeg. Well, Connor can play on any, anyone. So um, we just need to persevere, hang in the in the hunt here with like the seven other or eight other teams that are in our conference. And, uh, you know. So, yeah, he referenced those injuries players, and being able to take advantage of the situation when those players are back. Um, yeah, you know, he, he he talked about Stringer too, and that's been kind of, I'll say, a disappointing. Uh, uh, yeah, like he was, he got suspended there for two yeah. games, and then he come back, and then or he didn't come back from the suspension. He's been he injured, been and it's been day to day, and thought it was well, maybe it's still with that concussion problem not concussion but that headshot he took with the puck yeah or maybe there's still lingering effects because it was just day to day day to day right and but then actually you look at it it's lower body and then john did mention it's kind of a groin leg issue so so it's not a head issue which is good um so but it's still lingering it's just it's been day to day for for a few weeks now which is a little tough i mean and the other guys like johnson and smith they've been progressing as per the weekly report so they're going to be good to come back here in january by the looks of it hopefully that obviously they won't be full systems go right away but at least get them back in the lineup and then then you get sposal and bedard back from juniors you know that'll be in the new year as well and then and then, yeah, so hopefully you can have a full team. And then, um, But mind you, then the trade deadline's there on the 10th or whatever day it is. And what do they do there? So it's kind of... Yeah, we talked about that last last episode. Um, you're feeling, and I, I don't know, has anything changed from that? So we were talking Evans as being possible trade bait. Uh, of course, he's a 20-year-old, so there's uh, unique circumstances around a trade like that. But uh, anyone else kind of creeped into your head that might... Maybe. Well, you kind of look at that 19-year-old group. Like, there's quite a few guys there. Who who do you move on from now? Yeah, because you can't bring them all back, right? So, I mean, you look at a guy like Carrier. He's kind of stepping up. He's got 11 goals, but yeah. But it, when you look at them, four of them are uh, empty netters. <laughs> so <laughs> that's I mean, true. Yeah, but I mean, seven goals there. Um, so then, what else you got for 19s? Like, you got your Cole Dubinsky, Englot, Brook, Cadeau, Bateman, right? Yeah. And then Carrier. So you got, there's six guys there. You got to, you're going to lose three. Yeah. At the end of the year, no matter what. Do, so do you, do do you now move if, on from one now so you can get something for them? If the like, offer is right, like, but at the same time, you're not going to get a huge haul. No. For any of these guys. But uh, I mean, like, okay, so one of these. Guys is gonna step up next year and have a good year, right? Like Dubinsky's probably your your most talented player there. Yeah. yeah. Then do you want a, uh, a veteran defenseman? Um. So then you got to pick one other guy, right? Kind of thing. So. Yeah. It's it's tough to say what they do. I mean, you probably have to move on. I think I you're mean, looking if, more at a, a role player with these guys, and I think, I think Englot could fit a role on some teams right he's a a big tough guy uh really good for puck possession battling on the boards uh parking in front of the net yeah if someone's looking for someone like that he could he could uh pique their interest um cole carrier you know he's got that speed that's been on display and i think he's caught the attention if someone someone thinks he could fit in to their team uh, with that and take yeah, advantage of that. He plays a physical game too, not as much as Engla, but he's yeah. he's a big guy and he plays physical. Um, and then Dubinsky, I mean, he's got some skill, and if you put him in the right situation, he might be. Like, imagine if you had, if you had two good lines, like, like really skilled lines, and then if you're looking for a third line that just to keep, like, how would you match up? Like, you're just thinking about playing matchups and stuff, and you have two high skilled lines and then you're looking for like a third line center or something like that. You might be a guy there, um, to just keep hitting teams, um, and just wear them down. And I don't know. I don't know. I think there's, there might be some spots for these guys. Uh, if they're looking, I don't, I frankly, I think we're kind of at that point. (laughs) If there's some good, good, uh, offers that come along, but you'd be looking again. We're not looking for 
draft picks. We're no. looking for a 17 year old, maybe or an 18. 18. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Yeah. You want, you want some potential back, right? Cause the draft pick does nothing for next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, it's do or die next year. Really? Right. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough decisions here. Lots of decisions coming up now, yeah. coming up now and coming up in the off season as well. Yeah. Well, the next few weeks will be, will be interesting. Uh, see how that plays out. So speaking of the draft, the draft for 21 has come in, come and gone. Um, kind of right in the middle of the season, it's hard to kind of change your focus from, from normal season talk to, to a middle, like just a draft in the middle of the week <laughs> during the season. But uh, it came and went. Uh, so Regina was going into this draft, not having a first round pick after trading it away to Lethbridge for Zach Stringer. Now we were able to make a move and acquire the first round from Kamloops to get the 21st overall pick. Uh, pick it up Jackson Vaughn out of uh, out of Kelowna, um, originally from Merritt, BC. And then in the second round, pick up his, his brother, Corbin Vaughn. Uh, so kind of our own version of the Sedin twins here. <laughs> I, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I haven't got a lot of opportunity to look into any reports or anything like that. That's something... Typically, we get to do in the off season and, and spend some time speaking to some people that know these guys a lot better than we do. Um, any any scuttlebutt or anything you've heard about them? Not really. Just I listened to that interview with Dale McMullen. Thousands like they're both the first two picks there. They're both pretty big guys. They got some skill and stuff. So, but uh, other than that, I don't have much on these guys at all. And then, the, then there was the U.S. draft too. You know, a couple guys. Right out of the states that who knows yeah um i don't know how i mean it's they're still young but i mean last the last year's u.s draft there's only two guys signed out of there calgary has one guy signed and of course uh the pats do with mateo michaels right so but they're still young right yeah uh so speaking of signing uh that would be i don't know i mean you got john paddock now coaching the team gming the team When's he going to find time to start signing these guys? I don't know, maybe over the, the Christmas break, if possible. Uh, it'd be nice to see. Your, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's not fair to compare to other teams, but it seems like a lot of guys are getting signed here. Uh, yeah, some are playing already. Some, some are scored play- already. So. <laughs> some are playing. Uh, or the one thing I ha- I had in the back of my mind, or do you not sign these guys and maybe trade them you know, totally bl- waste your future, and you trade these guys, these couple top picks, for something that can help you now, right? I mean, that's totally mortgaging oh, yeah. the future because obviously you can't trade them after you sign them until they're seventeen. So yeah, you can trade but, them I mean, as draft picks. Yeah, you can still trade them if they're unsigned. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, that's oh, that's man. just one thought I had. I mean, like that's really mortgaging your future. But that would. That would cause a little eruption, I think, on, on the Twitterverse. <laughs> Start doing that. Hey, but that's an idea. Uh, that'd be interesting, but uh, I don't know if I could support that personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just throwing it out there. <laughs> it could happen. Who knows? But uh, interesting. So, you know, likely what we'll do is is find someone to talk to about these guys and not just them, but the other draft picks. We usually can get some information about about a good majority of them, and uh, that might be a. They might wait till the end of the season. Actually, hey, that's usually when yeah, we we'll do that kind of stuff. So, uh, no, interesting. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll get some information on those guys, and uh, hopefully get some somebody signed here. Just I don't know. I like to. It just seems like that's that's progression. If you draft them, let's sign them. Instead of having it all up in the air, because it's been a bit yeah. of a, I don't want to say a struggle, but a few, we've missed some signings here lately, which is too bad, right? Yeah, there's, you know, you look at the, O four. Uh, they signed a few guys out of the O four age group, and the O five is, you know, they've signed some guys, but there's a lot of unsigned guys still in the list. Yeah. But I mean, they're gonna have to clear some of those guys off the list to make room for the O sixes. So we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah. yeah. So see what happens, I guess. We will see what happens. Okay, well let's uh, let's take a look around the league here. So kind of interesting, right? Like it's been a couple weeks here, changed things a fair bit. Maybe not so much with the standings a lot, but you're seeing teams like Winnipeg uh, after just coming out of the gate red hot are actually 5-4-1 and one in their last 10. So uh, pretty interesting. So that's really effectively 5-5, five and five, hey? Yeah, and then same with, you look at Kamloops and Everett on the other side, they're both four four wins in the last 10. Yeah. Um, Seattle's the hottest team in the league right now, 7-1-2. and two. They've yeah. jumped up to second in the West. Yeah. yeah but I mean, Kamloops has lost their starting goaltender, so that, you know, that, that hurts them. For to how long? World Juniors. Oh, so. to World Juniors, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's too bad. There was a good tilt between Winnipeg and, and Edmonton, but after Edmonton lost, what, four? Three yeah. Or four, four well, they played times? before. Yeah. Oh, like on a losses. random Wednesday, though, which was yeah. a really good game. Uh, and then they had a rematch later on, but that was that Wednesday or whatever it was, was the last or Thursday. I don't know what it was, but yeah, uh, last game with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so Edmonton I, won. I think, yeah, Edmonton, Edmonton won that one, and then Winnipeg won the rematch. Yeah. But yeah, Edmonton lost you know, started goaltending and, and their two best forwards and probably their best defensemen. So, yeah. yeah. So four players off to world juniors. Um, so it's still kind of that, you know, that we're going to talk about levels of teams. You have Winnipeg, Edmonton at the top. Um, Red, Red Deer is creeping up there. They are. They're, they're closing that gap. They're kind of that. Yeah. Like we said, they're quietly not bad. Um, I'd say quietly good. Okay, quietly good. <laughs> They're twenty nine one and one, right? Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's better than not bad. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because uh, you look at the next team down is Brandon at fifteen and thirteen. Gap. Like there, that's a that's a significant gap. There's ten points there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you would you rank them in that same tier? Uh, I don't think I'd rank them in that tier because they're they're only five points behind Edmonton. But once Edmonton okay. gets their guys back, yeah, they might make up some ground here with them gone. But in the new year, I think Edmonton will take off. Fair enough. So Winnipeg, Edmonton, tier one, Red Deer, it's tier two, tier two. Fair enough. And then Brandon down is tier three. And there's I no think. tier four. <laughs> uh, Medicine Hat. Okay. okay. You're gonna keep us in team three or tier three. Well, we're we're only I don't know. Really, like <sighs> Moose Jaw has uh what, seven more points, but they also have three more games played. Yeah. So even if we win two out of three you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like we said, it's, it's uh close. we're in a bit of a hole. Now can the team regroup, dig themselves out of this and uh See, because it's not it's not totally out of the picture yet, right? And and see, that's the big question. Like, okay, so if you do trade off some guys, like, do you trade off an Evans? Then then how do you, your chances just go well, then they're gone. down? Yeah, right to make the playoffs. So it, it's a tough call, right? Because they 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 said they want to win, right? So are they just gonna keep Evans and just not give him away, or not not give him away, but not? Right get him something back for him i mean i would if there's a reasonable offer i'd get i'd send them on sorry but yeah you get <laughs> swozil he's you know he's he's not at evan's level but no. he's getting there you know Our, he's putting up points he's playing the power play so he just slides into evan's spot like kind of in the in the um, lineup right he doesn't take as many penalties so and there you go <laughs> but doesn't play nearly as much like you can Evans is out there all the time. And yeah. It's just, he logs a lot of minutes and he does, yeah, he still does take families. <laughs> Get some stupid ones too, man. Oh. Anyway, uh, yeah. So looking at that's the East. And then, yeah, like you referenced the West. Everett's still at the top. Seattle's climbing back in here. Uh, actually surpassed Kamloops. Um, but we'll see after World Juniors is done, see how that all kind of plays out here and everyone gets settled back in and after trade deadline we'll have a good idea 
of what the season probably looks like going forward. Um, kind of, ha- you know, like good for Swift Current though. Hey, they're twenty six points right now, uh, eleven and fifteen after being. Right, you look of, at them; they're yeah, they're they're a couple points ahead of us. They're yeah. they're doing all right. They signed a couple guys already out of this draft. So right. after being yeah, a dumpster fire, along. losing their coach early, like good right, for them. right, forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, Medicine Hat though it's it's kind of surprising. They've they've always got a decent team, right? I didn't and, think they would be that bad. They're yeah, really struggling. I mean, and Cylinder losing Cylinder obviously hurt, but I don't think he could have pulled them out of that hole. No one player. But like we were saying, not having him and not having him available to sell off, right? Yeah, Sucks. even <laughs> really kind of hurts them because they had a world class asset there that they could have sold. To, at the trade deadline, yeah, and probably got a pretty good, pretty good haul for him. And because uh, you know, if someone like so Red Deer just needs that extra little oomph, they might have been looking yeah. to do something right to compete with Edmonton and and Winnipeg. But all that is out the window. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of good stories, I, Victoria they really struggled off the bat and. And they've cr- climbed out of the hole. They're six two and two in their last ten, and they've picked up nine wins on the season now. They were really struggling, so good to see them going. Spokane's down at the bottom at seven and sixteen. They've been struggling lately at three and seven. But uh, yeah, haven't really watched. I flipped on the odd late game, but haven't yeah. watched a ton ton out west yet. Well, let's hope everyone stays safe uh i kind of don't want to talk about it but it's hard not the to. elephant in the room yeah yeah there's been quite a few shakeups in pro sports lately with uh with some covid cases and i don't know how many games have been lost thus far and it's been quite abrupt some of the the shutdowns and stuff so i think the queue just went no fans whatsoever did they really I think so. And some of the Ontario are 50%, I believe. I think I heard that, yeah. Yeah. So. So. I kinda, yeah, I haven't, <laughs> didn't really look into it too far because I just don't want to know. <laughs> uh, it's, it is but, kind of the elephant in the room, but not much we can do about it here. Um, I guess we'll see. We will see what happens with that, but hoping for the best. Definitely. Well, let's wrap up this mid-season review. Um, it's kind of just, it is what it is. Uh, maybe not exactly where we wanted to be this season at this point, but not terribly surprising either, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, especially when you add on all these injuries and stuff that doesn't help things that the team was, you know, middling to begin with. And yeah, just those, you know, injuries always happen, but uh, you just got to battle through and, and come together here in the second half. And yeah, that's how second half starts. What is it? Monday, December 27th. So an odd Monday game against a depleted Edmonton might be an opportunity to, <laughs> to beat them. See who, who ate too much Turkey. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we do have a bit of surprise here. So, uh, over the holidays, what if you don't want to be listening to your, your drunk uncle or crazy aunt or something like that. We have a special interview that we're going to be releasing with uh, Dante DiCario. We had a chance to speak to him a little while ago, and we wanted to make sure that that interview was uh, not time-specific. So we've been hanging on to it, and we're going to get that out over the holidays here. A little treat for you guys. And yeah, pop your earbud in there, and uh, just uh, if there's some conversations you want to ignore it'll be a good one um i really really liked it i think it's it's a little different than maybe what you might uh have heard him speak about it was more it's more into him and his history and get really getting into uh the profession of play-by-play which is something i've always found super interesting and wanted to i've never had the opportunity to talk to anybody about it so just excited and gracious and for that opportunity to speak to Dante and uh, get his, it was, it was super enlightening. I I say super a lot right now, but it was, it was just enlightening and uh, really interesting. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, So we're going to get that out over the holidays here. So you have something to listen to when there's no junior hockey going on. Of course, there's, 
there's always World Juniors kicking off, but uh, yeah, I think it'll be it'll be something if you're driving somewhere, your commute to to Christmas dinner or something. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for it because it's it was a really good interview. Yeah, it was definitely fun. He was he was uh, happy to talk with us and gave us lots of lots of information. Yeah, we had lots of questions for him, so it was it was really good. Yeah, definitely, yeah, I enjoyed it. So we will get that out for you guys and uh, enjoy your holidays. Enjoy the World Juniors, and we will be back in the second half of the season. Hopefully we'll see you at the rink. Yeah, hopefully. All right, everyone take care and be safe. Good night. Bye. Patscast is a proud member of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. If you're interested in other homegrown podcasts with a wide variety of topics, check out saskpodcastnetwork.com.